Alright guys, Hatchcraft back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far with plenty of roster updates and announcements coming out yesterday. There also was a fancy draft video the Optic guys did and Scott was on top form in this one, throwing some daggers the way of Selium, Octane and Slasher in that melee R position based on what Hex decided to do with his particular team. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one. Lots to discuss today. The game comes out though in like two days time at this point and uh, well we've got some updates on the game later today because I gotta say it's not looking so good. Firstly thought this is funny here from Hilton who actually went to the Halo World Championship and uh, of course also went to 2013 when he was the coach of uh, various different teams Parasite and Co. Back in Seattle 2013 thought it was a kind of funny combination between the two of them and let's talk about roster stuff. So firstly this from the Vegas Legion actually doing something on social media can you believe? Introducing the spookiest costume of the year Ravens no roster. So he thought this was actually kind of funny now, in fairness, Raven's clapback was also pretty good. We'd make a meme about dressing up as a Legion fan, but then we wouldn't exist. So, yeah, pretty tough stuff, but pretty funny between the two of them. And still, Raven's no roster confirmation. What's going on? I don't really know. Don't really care at this point because we know what the team's going to be. And to be honest, it's not going to be particularly good. Now, let's see some updates around the world. Firstly, from the Los Angeles Grillers, confirming, and this is a pretty big surprise to me, actually, that Mayhem is going to be the assistant coach to Marky B. They may yet still have more pieces of the puzzle yet to be determined. Hermans. But uh, yeah, Mayhem was at, well, right at the start of the franchise era. He was on Toronto, I believe, as one of their substitute players. Came off a pretty good year in Black Ops 4. And I thought that he was potentially going to replace Marky B on Toronto as their head coach. Turns out they brought both of them along. So I don't really know if Mayhem was too involved in the coaching perspective on Toronto last year. But Marky B and Mayhem both have just been nicked by LAG. So what did Toronto now do? Pretty crazy stuff, right? Because the only guy Toronto now have is uh, Flux who they confirmed to be returning as their assistant coach. I think they might have wanted to get Phoenix from Seattle Surge. Like, I think there was maybe a conversation that was had there, but that, of course, I got shut down. And then um, you know, Riven from New York went to be the GM for Seattle Surge. And then Sender has, of course, gone to New York from Optic, even though maybe they wanted uh, him to go to Toronto as well. So Toronto have kind of got, um, you know, they got mugged off a bit, to be honest, this roster period, because they wanted Afro. And then, um, of course, Minnesota Rocker pay him more and take him away. They also got uh, a couple of good players from the Toronto onto the Minnesota Rocket team anyway and Cami Advance going over there. So definitely some good rivalries there and also they've lost a large percentage of their coaching staff. So interesting to see what they will do to try and make up for this because as it stands there's not much going on in that Toronto Ultra camp from a coaching perspective. So um, I mean yes yeah, an absolute ghost town over there right. Flux is the only man that is there right now and as uh, Crone actually points out here these are the coaching staffs so far for the upcoming season. So Crowder, RJ, Mac, and Tupac all at Atlanta phase. Like, yeah, they've still got a pretty stacked coaching lineup over there. Of course, like, you know, Two Bug the Search and Destroy guy, but Crowder, we believe, is still going to stay. Whether he's quite as active a head coach position as he has been before, that's a question. Boston just have Zed, but they do have Dens as their GM, who I think is also kind of involved to some degree on the Call of Duty day to day type stuff. Willett is the only guy at Florida. Then LAG have now got Marky B and Mayhem. London have got Dominate. Minnesota Rocker, pretty big team over there. Brian St. Looney and Alex. Dorian send it at New York, Phoenix, Rambo and this is the thing with some of these teams, you know, Optic right? Like why haven't they, of course we've seen other teams and now Los Angeles good as continuing to bolster their coaching staff, why don't we get any announcements from Optic? As surely like they need an assistant coach that is very clear, losing Sender so we expect something to be announced in due course LA Thieves have Jacob and Shane at Toronto currently just have Flux and, uh, and Vegas we expect to just keep Theory for effectively forever because they're not going to want to pay anyone else to be in uh, an assistant coach role or anything so it's interesting, right? I mean, yeah, some of these guys have, or some of these organizations have way more coaches than others. And, uh, you know, does that indicate a degree of success? Maybe, maybe not. We potentially will see in due course, but Phase and Fairness have been the most successful team in the franchise era so far. Let's talk then about Atlanta Phase and their confirmation yesterday of the fifth man of their team. This is the thing. I'm kind of surprised now that teams are starting to confirm substitute players and this type of stuff's coming through. We expect to see more and more of it. Now, I thought this is a well-done video actually here with 
the slasher, so he's talking to some sort of, like, demon through the walls or whatever. Like, um, effectively, it's the curse of Nikki D. You guys know that Classic, when he was on that Seattle Surge team at Major 5 in Cold War, took them down Game 5 with a dominant performance, and uh, pretty much played the best series of his entire career, at least in recent memory, against FaZe to knock them out. So that was the whole curse of Nikki D thing that's come along. And honestly, Classic is a great sub player, veteran kind of talent and presence on the team as well. Obviously, he's been a very solid player throughout his career, like a real role player as well. Not going to be a star player, but if you need him to sub in, he's always going to do a solid job and also brings a lot outside of the game rather than, you know, he's not a cracked out young player that's going to be dropping 1.3s, but you kind of know what you're getting from him on a sub position if you did need to sub him in. So one of the kind of more ideal substitute players you're probably going to find outside of the league and uh, especially makes sense for FaZe because it's not like they need star talent on the bench because if you've got a guy like Sib on your bench that they had before, it's like, well, if you even put him in, does it even make much sense? Well, it's better off him just going to another team and actually competing on a starting roster, whereas Classic is pretty much the ideal position here. So pretty funny they were joking about the kind of curse of Classic, curse of Nicky D that's haunted FaZe the last couple of years. And I suppose if you can't beat him, then you've got to make him join you, right? And get Classic on the team as well. So the curse of Nicky D is going to be no more, unless it's the other way around, where Classic has now successfully infiltrated the ranks and therefore he's going to destroy FaZe from the inside, which uh, we'll see if uh, kind of that continues as well. So maybe the curse of Nicky D has now been internalized by FaZe and that could go badly. And I just wanted to expose Gersh as a fraud, actually, because I tweeted this out here, phase up or whatever, because this is the classic thing where, where Nikki D took them down. And this is poorly edited. I just did it in ShareX. I just chucked this like little text box here and I thought it was kind of funny. This at 9.08 p.m. my time last night. And then look at this. Gersh, maybe it wasn't Gersh, I don't know. But he, uh, obviously the face on Twitter tweets this out eight minutes later. Yes, admittedly better edited version. Fraud social media manager, in my opinion. I'm just joking around, of course, but still thought it was pretty funny. But uh, yeah, classic. What do you think about this? is the phase at sub. There were some other options out there they could have gone for, I suppose. But as I say, they don't really need an absolute star power talent on their bench. So it makes sense to get a guy like Classic. But um, yeah, will the Nikki D curse come to haunt them? Still, we shall see about that one. Let's talk then about uh, the Optic draft they went through last night. Did a fantasy draft. Kind of everyone does their fantasy drafts. And it's becoming more and more of a popular thing, actually. And we'll try and get something figured out on the Breaking Point site shortly for... Because we want to bring back fancy, of course, that we did last season. But we want to try and make some upgrades and some steps and stuff like this so maybe you can do like a, some actual drafts with friends and stuff and um yeah so last night opting did a video and they went through the four of these guys hex hitch and uh scum and shotzi of course and they made their draft fancy teams and then they actually got a uh, rabo ray to kind of uh, rank them at the end and it turned out the ranking at the end if you guys want to know is hex's team was fourth because of bad roster building we'll see in a second shotzi's team got third scump's team was second and then hitch's team was first largely because you know it was big t on the other teams the idea was you you pick a player kind of in their prime is the idea like just prime of x player right so they were talking about like black ops 3 john and you know ghosts or advanced warfare zuma stuff like this when these players were absolute peak performance levels and then um, scott was talking about infinite warfare formal and stuff so yeah scott was definitely on top form of this video i wanted to share a few highlights here about some of the picks that he made for his team also what he said to shotzi when shotzi decided to pick um selium right as their ar or as his ar over some other options that were certainly out there and then also his reaction to Hex picking nade shots as his main AR over Octane and Slasher, for example. Uh, my first pick, IW Formal, 100% main Damn. AR. You already know. T2P up in this. Biatch! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, we'll get, uh, we'll get Vanguard MC. Okay. Oh, my f neck just snapped. Oh! Ah, oh. oh, what? Ah! <laughs> The I dick ride is heavy. Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. Hey, what? Dude, that seems a good pick. Wait, that. Listen to, don't listen to. Oh, man. That was Yo, funny. I thought your neck actually snapped. I was like, what? No, wait, you never heard that? You already know my pick. Well, Prep? No, that's that boy Dylan Hannon. I knew, I knew Dylan was coming. Dylan Hannon the cannon up in the cannon. Give me, give Where me is he? Envoy. Oh, give me what? Dylan. Uh, I'll give my boy John. John, Black Ops 3. Okay, Ooh. that's a good pick. Ooh. All right, I, I got some two say picks. he was better than me in that game. Uh, no, not I strongly some, disagree. Yeah, really? some. He's not all some. The majority, obviously. Because he no. won champs and we won like nine tournaments. So. Yeah, no, no. Set, like nine sets. tournaments. Yeah. Yeah. Octane is probably like freaking. He, got, he just saw Nade Shot get picked as a main in front. He hit front of him. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, For I, the record, I know I, he's watching this so tight right now. I'm just saying, it's like, what do I have the best chance of building a super marketable team? Oh, you're not out marketing <laughs> my team. And slash what the f 
Are yeah, you talking? You're not out marketing right my team. I'm not out marketing your team. So this was the overall draft at the end of the video. Here's a scum kind of had the first pick here. So he went for formal infinite warfare, first of all. Not really sure why Hex had Nation as his main AI. If you switch around the roles here, it might make sense. Like, it's not like Hex's team is bad at all, but Nade is the main AI. This doesn't really make any sense. That obviously wasn't the role that he ran. Yes, he occasionally pulled out the HBO and Advanced Warfare champs, but he was very rarely an AR player throughout his career. And uh, then you've got, of course, Team Shotzi, largely, you know, kind of newer generation players to some degree. Play that I guess Shotzi's more familiar with. Dog on the bench as well, I thought was pretty funny. And then Team Hitch of Big Time Azuma, Krim, and TP. Definitely an intelligent team there from Hitch, knowing that Rambo was marking these to, uh, you know, try and figure out what Rambo would prefer from a squad. But yeah, these were the teams. I thought Scumps was pretty nice as well with Kenny. I guess, yeah, Kenny technically now is an SMG, but still, all things considered, he can run a flex very well. Envoy and Apathy as the SMGs. I thought it was good that Apathy got some love. But look at the players that missed out here. Like, um, honestly, in terms of main AR positions, the fact that Octane and Slasher, I mean, they're all both here. Even Clayster missed out, right? Three-time world champion Clayster missed out on even an AR spot over Nade Shot and Big T and all this type of stuff. Like, I'm sure they're not so happy about that. And yes, yeah, Scott was saying, look, Hex managed to somehow put Nade Shot in his main AR over Octane and Slasher. Those guys aren't going to be so happy about it, right? The other point that Scott was making was on John during the Black Ops 3 season. That is often a discussion that is had. Who was the better player that year? Because John got the World Championship MVP and he was kind of the absolute door door player at that event. Like, he was pretty good all season, John. But at Champs, he just went up to a new level. He was doing it with the VMP. He was doing it with the, um, even the, what was it called, the HVK right on, on Fringe. He was absolutely dominant force that event. So, yeah, John will be remembered for his Black Ops 3 Champs performance especially. But in fairness, Scum over the course of the season was just pretty much dominant the whole year. So, John was great right at Champs and right to the end of the season. Scum was great the entire year. So, I think that Scum's got a fair point about being the better player over the course of that season because that was really the battle for number one one player in the game at that point, especially from an SMG perspective. So yeah, that was one of the other things that Scott was talking about. But yeah, what do you guys think about this? What were the reaction from Octane and Slasher and these guys be seeing the likes of Nade Charts up there as the main ER position? And of course, Scump himself could have chosen some other players here instead in a flex position and stuff, but decided not to. Went for Envoy as the SMG, which I thought was kind of nice, but a BZ, nowhere to be found. Aches, nowhere to be found on this list either. Gunless, even Jerd is there. Some legends from COD history as well. Proofy misses out. Jcap even. Two Two-time world champion misses out, nameless, of course. So, um, yeah, a lot of big-name players here missing out. I thought it was quite nice that Mad Cat got a spot here on Hex's bench. Legendary player as well, and fantastic talent in his day. And also, I thought the Selium thing was quite funny when, uh, of course, that Shotzi decides to pick Selium as the AR, and then he's like, well, I got a second. Maybe you should have picked someone else. Of course, like, Shotzi's more familiar with the newer-gen players and just played against Vanguard Selium, and I'm sure that was a pretty difficult time. But, you know, there was other AR options out there from COD Pass, you know, Octane Slasher, Kaleister, for example, would have maybe been my pick, to be honest. So, I mean, yeah, I think it's a, it's always a funny one when these guys are, are getting into business. And I just thought this was interesting from Deserto, actually. Breakout player this season. Not really understanding this, because I thought breakout player or breakout season was generally like when you're kind of an unknown quantity and then you have a good season. Whereas the names on here are kind of like, uh, you know, <laughs> these guys have been around a lot of these for a rather long period of time. But I guess it's more about who's going to have a good season maybe compared to last year. Clayster would be an example of someone who definitely needs to turn it up and if he doesn't it might well be the end for him just to say this quickly because we don't know what the plan is next season on the desk side who's going to be the host who exactly is the casting pairings going to be and uh, Veli actually replies to this New York tweet right here dressed up as a doctor for some reason he's looking pretty good but uh, yeah he's still interacting with Call of Duty stuff so I don't know if there's a world in which Veli returns seems unlikely but um yeah I think I would still like to see a world in which Puckett comes back as the host for the 2023 season I suppose we'll find out in due course but very much enjoy your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.